We are joined now by Michael Kay, who, of course, calls the games here on Yes and the Yankees. Michael in Toronto for the final game of that series against the Blue Jays. And, Michael, when you think of Yogi, what comes to mind? I just think of a guy who is so approachable, and Jack touched on this at the open of the show. He's probably the nicest, famous person that I've ever met. He didn't have any airs about him. He didn't have any agendas about him. When he was talking to you, he was talking to you. He was fully engaged, and he didn't big-time anybody. And I always say this about famous ball players, famous people. As good as they might be, there's always somebody out there that doesn't like them. I don't think you could find one person that doesn't like Yogi Berra. That's the type of guy that he was, and I think he was very special in that, in that way. He just made people around him feel special when he was talking to you. Michael, you've spent a lot of time in Yankee clubhouses. When Yogi Berra would walk into the clubhouse, what kind of reaction would he get from the players? It was amazing, Jack. It, it, was like, it was like Christmas morning. The players loved Yogi Berra. Derek Jeter loved Yogi Berra. Jorge Posada, just to name a few. When he walked in, people lit up. And he had something to say to everybody. And it wasn't just glad-handing, stuff like that. He would be teaching you when you didn't even know that you were being taught. That's how good he was. He'd say, you know, you did this yesterday, and, and it didn't come across as heavy-handed because everybody knew this is the guy with 10 World Series rings. This is one of the greatest players of all time. And, and just spring training when he was around, everybody loved him. Joe Torre loved having him around. It was never an imposition. It was always something that you embraced because, hey, it was Yogi Berra. And you know what, Michael, I'm glad you brought up spring training because that's where a lot of the young players are. And when Yogi Berra would come to camp and some of the older Yankees, you know, they might not know who some of the players are, but they know who Yogi was. And that what was made him so unique is the fact that he crossed age spectrums where everybody knew who this iconic figure was. Well, not only that, Bob, he didn't just cross age spectrums. He crossed every spectrum. He wasn't just a baseball player. He was one of the most famous people on this planet. Everybody knew him, either from the beer commercials, from Yoo-Hoo, from the Yankees, from the Malaprops, all of that. Everybody knew Yogi. Everybody knew Yogi by one name. And there aren't many people on this, uh, on this earth that are known by one name and recognizable to everybody in most every country. Michael, is there one thing or one story that stands out to you about Yogi? Well, there, there are a couple, but one, I don't even know if, if it's an apocryphal story or not, but everything that Yogi touched, it seemed like it turned to gold. I had heard a story that when they were teammates in the 50s, Yogi, Whitey, Mickey, and Billy all bought these huge tracts of land in Central Florida, and that's where they were going to build houses when they retired. They were all going to uh, be neighbors, and the kids were going to grow up together, the whole deal, and as time went on, each guy sold his plot of land. Mickey sold his. Billy sold his. Whitey sold his. Yogi, for some reason, held on to his, kept holding on, kept holding on. People were trying to buy it from him. He said, no, 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 I want it. And you know what? That plot of land was directly in the middle of where Disney World now stands. And Disney had to offer him and pay him an awful lot of money just to build Disneyland. That's the luck of Yogi Bear. Absolutely. Michael, one final question before we let you go. You have called a lot of old-timers days. You introduced the players on the field. When you get near the end and you get near those iconic figures, the Whitey Fords and the Don Larsons, you know the buildup to Yogi Bear. What is that like? When you, That's got to be... Almost goosebump inducing to know that when you're about to introduce Yogi Berra, you know what kind of reception he was going to get. And people knew exactly who was coming up, too. And it's funny, you get handed the script, and you know John Sterling does one read, and I do another read, and I would always go to the end and see if I got Yogi, because I just loved introducing Yogi Berra because of the reaction from the crowd. People loved him. Other people get polite applause. Other people get the applause that you deserve because of the greatness that you have. But for Yogi, it wasn't just the greatness as a ball player. I think that his, his real person persona, it just bled out into the public as well. And people in the stands sat there and they felt, he's one of us. He's our buddy. And he also happens to be a great Yankee. And you could feel that love coming at him uh, from the stands when he was introduced on Old Timers Day. Great perspective, Michael. Thank you. We'll see you again later tonight.